Welcome back everybody. This is always back with another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you console API in Chrome. Now, when you're doing a web development, there are a lot of times that you're going to be using console.log function and that's about it. But console API provides a lot more and not many people know about it. And we're going to take a look at what's available in console API. And I'm going to give you some use cases where you can go and improve your debugging process using console. So let's get started. Now the most famous function in web development for debugging is console.log, which outputs the message to the web console. A lot of times people use that function without realizing if there is any other function available in a console API, which can serve them better. In this video, we're going to go through some of the tips and tricks using console API, as well as looking at other functions or other functions available within this console API, which can help us to debug our application, explore some documentation of console API on Mozilla developer network. I'll drop this link in the description so you can click on that and come to this page or you can go and search on Google about console API and you will get to see a link for MDN, Mozilla Developer Network. So I'm going to read this passage. It says the console API provides functionality to allow developers to perform a debugging tasks such as logging a message of the value of the variable at set points in your code. I've got this empty browser page so I'm going to click on these three dots and go to developer tool. Here we've got a lot of options like element console. We're not going to focus off anything else but console. Okay, so what does this do? Well, it's a runtime of a JavaScript. You can write any kind of JavaScript code here and that will be executed. It's like a wrapper for Python, but for JavaScript. Go back to documentation and here we got an interface, which is console. Okay, let's type console here. If I type dot and I get to see a lot of an option. So usually if you're a web developer, most of the time you will be using log. Not many people know about other options available in console API. So we're going to go through some of the cool options available. Look at some of the basic options available other than log. So log will log any text or any kind of value or any primitive data trial like object array to the console when you use dot log. You can see I typed console.log and it logged this string. You have some other like info. It will do the same thing. So I'll do info. You have a console dot error and this will log that value. So the UI will be different of that log. So it did log this error, but also it telling me that, hey, this is an error. So console.error is very useful if you want to catch an error or on the console, you want to show, hey, this is an error. So you can differentiate between a simple log or error. For the documentation and here we have seen this log function. We have seen this error function. And also we've seen this info. The next one would be a warning. So you've seen that how it logs the error. So if I type dot warn, let's just say warning here, enter, and now it logged this value, but the UI is different. So this determines that, hey, this is a warning. Well, it's good to write dot warn when there is a warning for, you know, developer. For example, you see a lot of times a warning about deprecation in your uh, your library that you're using. So they have deprecated some function and they will start giving a warning into the console. So this is great if you're writing a library or anytime you want to, you know, show that, hey, this is a warning. You got to be careful. It's not going to break your application, but this is just an initial warning for you. So that's a simple warning. Now here we got some parameters. We only use this string, but we'll come back and have a look what are the parameters and why they're so useful. You have some other common options like time, time end, time log, time stamp, explore time, time end, and time log. How do we use them? So I'm in a console, so I'll type console.time and then I will start a time, let's just say timer. Okay. I'll press return, enter on a Windows. Now nothing happens. So what happens here? So basically this will start the timer and then you can do console.timelog 
and you need to type the name of the timer that you started. So in this case, it was timer. Okay, I'm going to press return and it's going to give me the timer for this timer is about 190. So it's basically a millisecond. So how do we get that into a second? So I'm just going to copy this bit, paste it here, divide by 1000, enter. And that telling me that 19 seconds have passed. So if I use that timer again, and this time you can see the value has changed. So we basically can start the timer and then we can check what or the time it took to complete any function. I'll give you a practical usage or use case for this. So in this case, it's gonna be a 44 second. Now, why do we need to use the timer? For example, you are writing a quiz application and you want to see when a user or a guy who's taking a test starts the question and when it finishes. So to do that, I'm going to clear the console and here we will start a time, okay? I'll say question, okay? You can say the question one or question two, okay? So I'll just say question one, or we can say Q1. Start the timer, and now I will just say alert, and I'll say, have you answered the question? Enter. And now it says, have you answered the question? So let's just say I'm thinking and thinking, what is the answer for this? I will click OK. And once that's done, then I can use something like this. So have you answered the question? Semicolon and then do a console.time log. And then you can use that Q1. And then I will press return. And now when I click on OK, so have you answered the question? I'll click OK and you can see it logged the time. Now in this case, you can actually start the timer and finish the time as well. And then you can grab that timer value that how long it took a guy to actually do that. So we can use that console.time end and I have to say Q1, enter and the timer end here. Now if I use this console.timelog and I pass in Q1, it should throw an error. It says timer Q1 does not exist. So you can start the timer in the console and you can log it and you can end it as well. So it's basically very, very useful if you want to track the time of a certain things happening on your web application. So this is one of the, the really good use cases for this, but it can be used in different ways as well. Let's go back to documentation. So we've seen uh, this time. The next thing I would like to show you here would be trace. Not many people use this function. Basically, it's a great uh, function on a console that you can use to uh, trace the stack. So I'm gonna use the example and I'm going to paste that example here, okay? So basically I'm using the full function and within that I'm gonna use the bar function and then I'm gonna use console.trace and then we can log in the bar and then the foo. So let's press return and you can see it traced. So it ran a bar first and then the foo. It's gonna go back to documentation and next function we're gonna take a look at is dir. So dir displays an interactive list of properties of a specific JavaScript object. Go back to console, I'll type console.dir and then I'm gonna type object. Enter, it returns this function and I can see all the properties and methods available in object. Now this is useful when you want to find out what's available for you in JavaScript world. Clear is basically is used to just clear the content of the console. So I'll type console.clear enter, it will clear the console, but it will not get rid of the, the things that are in the memory. We're gonna take a look at table. Now, this is one of my favorite functions available in the console. So I'm gonna read this passage. This function takes one mandatory argument data, which must be an array or an object, and one additional optional parameter column. 
So it logs data as a table. Each element in an array of data will become like an index and then it will show the content against that. So let's go here in the console. I'm going to type console.table and I'll use just this array. When I press return and you can see it gave me the index and all the values. Now this is great when you want to log some sort of data and a lot of times you will have an API call happening for your web application which returns some sort of an object and instead of using log you can use this table. Not many people use this or maybe they don't know about it. So if I use console.log and I use an array 1, 2, 3, 4 and I will close this and it does log an array like this but it's not really intuitive to see an array in an object. Documentation, I'm going to copy that line of code, I'm gonna paste it here and you can see the values and their index. We looked at the array, now we're gonna take a look at an object. So I'm gonna copy this function, a person, let's paste it here and then we're gonna copy this bit as well and I'm going to paste that here. I'm gonna use console.table and I'm gonna pass in an object, which is a person object and me. Now you can see instead of index one to three, which is like an array, it showed the key and then the value, key and the value. Now this is great because you can restrict, you know, when you have an API returning lots and lots of data and you wanna just restrict some keys and visualize their data, you can do that as well. Let's go back here and I'm just going to copy this one here and let's clear the console, paste that here, I'm going to use console.table, pass in people, enter and you can see now you got an index and you got a top index as well. It works on a two dimensional array as well and you can see all the values. It will work on a three dimensional, four dimensional array as well. A couple of things here. We got the function person there. I'm gonna go back and then copy these lines. And now I'm going to copy this line in an array. Now this is going to be a really good one. Paste it here. Now you can see the index because you put these square brackets around your objects and then you got the key and their values, key and their values. Now you can restrict those as well. So here is a bit of line that I'm going to show you. Let's clear the console. I'm going to paste that here. Now what's this doing here is that go to John, Jane, and Emily. Log the data, but just show me their first names. Enter, and you can see it's just showing you the first name. Now if I use here last name, it's just going to show you the last names here. So it's really great when you want to deal with the data coming in from your API request and you just want to filter out some data just to see what has changed. To wrap up this video, we'd like to show you one cool parameter that you can pass into console.log function, which can be very helpful in terms of a use case where you want to log something with a certain CSS. For example, you have some events happening in your web application, you wouldn't have some group of actions happening, and you want to log them into console with a custom CSS so they can be visualized, you know, you know, by looking at that log that, oh, this is an action or this is an error or this is a warning or this is like a success event happening. So you can do that by using a custom CSS. Let's go back to this. I'm going to clear this console. I'm going to type console.log and I would like to use percentage C, which basically is going to tell the compiler, hey, look for a custom CSS as well. So I'll say I am logging with custom CSS, add a comma, and now I'm gonna use single quotes, close this, and here I can define a custom CSS. So for this, I would like to use background property from CSS and give it a value of hash 555, and then I add semicolon, space, I would like to do a color, and let's just say yellow, semicolon, and that's about it. And I'm going to press enter and you can see now when it logged this text, it actually applied the custom CSS that we provided. Now, if I change the color to, let's just say red, enter, 
now you can see the custom CSS is getting applied. Now use case for this is really good. I'm gonna close this and I'm going to actually copy and paste the snippet of code that I'm gonna put here. Let's just press enter. Oh, there's an error that says log CSS has already been declared. Okay, that's fine because I copied pasted there before. So let's just clear this out. Here I've got this log object and I can have like five functions here, error, warning, act, success and log. So these are my custom, uh, you know, functions within this log. So I created my own logger and let me show you this act. So here I'm using console.log function and I'm going to say, hey, can you please look for this custom CSS for this log? And percentage s means that what string it's going to use for this custom CSS. So comma, apply this log CSS variable, which has this custom CSS as a string, and then the message, which will basically pass in through this parameter, and that will be applied to this. So if I clear this and I can use my, um, just clear this and I'm gonna use this log, log dot, let's just say success. Let's say hello function executed successfully. Enter and there you go. You got this custom CSS applying to log. So you can basically uh, differentiate certain logs or group of logs into different CSS, which will help you to see things differently in the console log. Okay, that's about it. I hope you liked the video. That was a bit of uh, information about the console that you can use and their use cases. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Subscribe to the channel and like the video if you did like it. Also look at the description of, uh, I've mentioned some of my JavaScript courses if you're interested in. All right, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one.